We'll talk about Keenan because he's sitting next to me. Uh, we had Keenan in the draft, so we were we we're ready to take him in the draft. We thought it would be a selection in the national draft, so we changed tack a little bit, and we were keen to get the ruckman. So we took Riley first. We didn't want to take a risk that he'd get knocked off by another club, so we took Riley, and then we rolled the dice and crossed our fingers and hoped that Keenan would still be there. Um, so we took Keenan second, and. Anthony Wilson from Norwood, um, so a couple of local boys and a ruckman from Victoria. We just saw Anthony as elite speed. I mean, he's probably as quick as anyone outside the AFL and maybe he's quicker than most in the AFL. We thought maybe it's a fraction early for him, but we could just see, we had a discussion last night, if we wait till this time next year, Anthony Wilson will probably have dominated the Sample, played state footy and be, everyone will be wanting to draft him. So we thought we're going to bite it off now. Uh, address the speed, which is something we've had to think about and try and add some speed to our group. So we went that way. So a ruckman, speed, and a 192, 193 player that can play forward, back, and has actually played midfield as well. Not that I think he's going to end up as an AFL midfielder because generally midfielders are midfielders, but um, he's got some versatility and he's a great local lad. Um, and we're wrapped. Um, the one, the one sad part and downside of all that is you can't pick everyone and I just feel for John o Beach because he's such a great lad and he deserves a chance um, and unfortunately we didn't have any more picks and we couldn't give him that chance because and had to ring him in today and explain John o, you haven't done anything wrong but it hasn't worked out again for him so that was a bit gutting for him but you know to his credit first thing he said oh, I'll just back up and go again next year and have another try so he's a great young man. Was it a tough call that maybe you going to take Beach on that third pick and as you sort of touched on Wilson you just couldn't risk losing him? No, well we probably weren't going to lose Wilson. We knew we could probably afford to take Wilson last pick but Keenan, we were terrified that he wasn't going to get there and we had to get a Ruckman so um, Keenan was in the draft list for us so we had to take him. He was in our talent order and pretty high so once we once we got Keenan, unfortunately John O. Um, we just didn't have any more spots. He'd love to pick them all, but he can't. So if Keenan was gone, we would have. Yeah, we would have picked Beach. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You say Wilson's pretty raw. What sort of stuff does he need to? What sort of stuff do you have to work with him on? Oh well, he's a very light frame, so he's going to come in the AFL. And but you know, he's got a great track of improvement. When we first saw him, when he got to Port Magpies, he was just a skinny little kid with some speed. He wasn't doing much at all, but he's had a great track of improvement. So constant improvement. So we think. Get him in the AFL system with our good coaching here. Um, who knows? And he's elite speed. You guys have seen him play, you know, on the Adelaide Oval in Sanford Finals. He's as quick as they get. So he's got a lot to learn. But we love the fact that he's made some consistent improvement. We think that can still happen here. So um, it's definitely worth a crack. Out of the seven you selected um, over the two drafts, you've got a fair bit of height in there. Is that a real requirement going into Oh, it was definitely a thought because, you know, it's obvious we've lost some height over the last few years and we had a clear plan and we've been able to address that plan and now it's over to the boys to get in and get their head down, bum up and work as hard as they can. But, yeah, look, ruck and outside speed were things we needed to address and key back with Lever and um, Keenan can play key defence as well and third tall. So, um, yeah, we're pretty pleased. Now they've got to work hard and make it happen. Kenna, well done. Um, great story. Obviously, it wasn't mean to you, one, to get drafted, two, to get drafted in your home state, even though you were a power fan. Yeah, it means obviously a lot to me. Uh, coming from a small country town in Port Lincoln, uh, footy's a big sport over there. So um, I guess to have the opportunity which the Adelaide Crows football club has given me, um, yeah, I'm just over the moon. And Look, I'm a crow supporter now, not a power supporter. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, a big setback when you when you were young. Um, how tough was that to overcome? One, just to play for you. Did you ever think you'd get to this point? I think I did. I think I never thought as my eyes a, uh, I guess, a hindrance. Or I thought, look, this is how I'm going to be. On my parents brought me up really well. Um, never said I couldn't do anything and I can't remember having two eyes so this is just how I've been my whole life and see, well, I think I'll see as good as everyone else. You must take great pride though to get to this level because not many people get this level anyway or anything goes swimmingly. 
yes, I think it's. Uh, I think I'm a good role model for kids um, to s show them that you can achieve anything that you put your mind to, um, and you know, hopefully, I can just go out and earn respect from all the players and train really well and hopefully get my opportunity. Have you had to do anything special over the years to try to like put yourself ahead of the pack? Given this, I wouldn't say special. I think just working a lot harder. Uh, doing the little extra things that perhaps other people aren't doing just to uh, put you in front of the pack, so to speak, yeah. What sort of little things do you reckon you do at training and, and all that sort of stuff? Uh, just the extra stuff, so getting the training early, practicing my goal kicking, recovery after training, going into the ice baths. Uh, I think at home, getting up in the mornings, going for runs, just getting the extra fitness up. Because you aced the goal kicking. Yeah, I was, yeah, scored the five out of five, so... So how much work would you put into your goal kicking, do you think, on a weekly, sort of average? Oh, look, I guess, yeah, it really depends. Might get the training maybe once a week, half an hour early, take six or seven balls down, just practice from all different spots inside the 50. That's because I was playing as a forward for the Magpies, um, and I guess if I was playing defence for the Magpies, I'd be doing something else. So where do, you, where do you find it? What's more comfortable for you, being uh, in attack or down back? I don't really have a preference. Um, I thought my first few games as a forward were fairly consistent and then I showed I could play on the best key forwards in the competition in the defence for the, the champs. How's mum and dad feel today? Yeah, they're over the moon. Uh, they were a bit nervous and very disappointed, obviously, because of the result last week. but. Look, everything happens for a reason. I'm just yeah, glad to get the opportunity. Uh, you see more as a forward or a defender? Um, I think the great strength will be be able to do both. Yep. It was funny, you know, the other night, Phil Bunn and I were walking over to tea in Glenelg and we bumped into Keenan, um, walking over to dinner, and uh, I knew he was a bit stressed about it. I said, mate, it doesn't matter what number you get picked, as long as you get picked. So he came, he was really balanced today. Usually there's a lot of jumping and screaming on the phone, but he was really balanced when we rang him and he's been under control all day, so... Yeah, I think, I think both. will be strength, he can play both ends. He's played a lot of junior footy as a forward and we really liked what he did in defence um, in the Nationals. So, And he's just that nice size. He'll be able to play on some of the bigger blokes and down to the sort of 188, 190 utilities as well. Did you guys have to do any extra testing with Keenan's eye? Or just... No, we just, we just um, took the psycho motor from the draft camp and we've watched him closely. And you know what? Sometimes it might actually be a strength. It makes him concentrate harder and his defensive positioning is way more advanced than some defenders because he thinks about it and he knows where he has to get. And he's got, he understands defensive craft really well for a young player. So it might actually be the other way. It might be a strength. Can you tell how tough it was yeah. last week to get through and will it provide extra motivation heading into the season to uh, prove yourself as a rookie? Yeah, definitely. I was very disappointed not given the opportunity, but now that the Crows have given me the opportunity, I'm absolutely stoked. And yeah, like um, Hamish said, it doesn't really matter what number you picked up, no one cares, and you just go out and you're like everyone else. Last couple of guys. Okay, and as um, I know Hamish and the boys absolutely test everyone at every single level and every, uh, I suppose, capability they can find. Have you found the fact that, you, although you've had that issue with the eye, has it made you more aware of working on other areas and perhaps trying to counter that to a degree? I wouldn't say so. I reckon if I had the two eyes and remember having the two eyes and then lost it, probably. But because I've played, started playing football with only the one eye, it's just how my body's adapted and, yeah, that's just how I play.